Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Simon with Top Doc Pro and today I just really want to walk you guys through the entire washing process, what's going on in my mind, kind of my mindset uh, that's happening while I'm washing these boats because I think it's very important to be super conscious of what you're doing, be aware of everything you're doing and why you're doing it and that's really what this video is going to be about today. Now the first thing that we are doing is I'm going to spray down the boat completely very thoroughly before we even get started with the washing process. So what a lot of people like to do is they just want to come on the boat, they want to rinse it down for 5 to 10 seconds and then they just want to get started washing. I like to get literally all the dirt, any leaves, anything that's on the boat, I want to get it completely cleaned with water first so I do like a water clean everything gets rinsed out I don't want to be washing dirt particles leaves I don't want to be washing sand salt all that kind of stuff back into the gel coat and scratch it up as I'm trying to wash the boat so super important all boats are going to be a little bit different some are going to be cleaner than others this one doesn't tend to get super dirty but there are boats that we have that are literally covered in leaves and tree branches, all that kind of stuff. We want to make sure all that gets tossed out of the boat first before we really start washing. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this clip a little bit until we get to the end of the actual wash process or not really the wash process, but the rinsing process. And then we'll go ahead and jump into washing. So. Again, key takeaway, make sure you are completely rinsing everything down, the boat from top to bottom, all the compartments, everything gets rinsed down completely, nothing left on the boat, and that's going to be a conscious and aware way to really rinse down the boat and know that you're not going to be damaging or scratching up any of the gel coat while you're actually washing the boat. So really important that we take the best care of these boats as possible. And that's really needs to be your commitment as maybe a boat detailer or someone who takes care of their own boat. So let's go ahead and speed up this clip and I'll see you in the next little section. First thing I will do before I actually start washing the boat with soap is we're gonna remove any rust stains that are happening and they're starting to kind of seep out of the stainless and we are using Stark Venom which is a water spot remover as well as a rust remover and this product works excellent for light rust stains it is a slow release acid which makes it different from muriatic acid or something that's very intense this one will slowly eat away your rust and it's not going to damage some of your surfaces such as gel coat stainless just because of the technology that's used a slow release is always going to be a little bit safer and that's what makes venom such an incredible product and it's specifically made for boats so if you guys haven't tried venom and you do have rust stains maybe you have water spots on your boat if you got color gel coat go ahead and give it a shot it's going to be amazing we will link all the products that we're using today in the description below the video and you guys can check that out be sure to use our code you guys always know we got top doc 15 as the code all that will be in the information in the description below but back to the boat um, really we have two packages here and we have a freedom boat wash which is what we call it and then we have a detailed boat wash so the freedom boat wash this is for clients who typically get on our detailing schedule. So their boats are going to be clean. They're not going to be rusting. They're not going to have mold and mildew on them because they get maintained annually or maybe biannually with a regular detail. And that's what's going to make the Freedom Boat Wash great for them. Now we also have a detailed boat wash, which is what we're doing today. This gives us an extra budget to use uh, Venom, maybe to use mold and mildew remover and maybe a little bit of degreaser so we get that extra budget to kind of take care of the boat more on a maybe a bi-weekly or monthly basis 
where the boat's actually never being detailed. So some clients, and you're gonna see this, if you offer boat washing in your detailing business, you'll probably run into this no matter where you're at. We saw this in Ohio, we saw this in Florida. Uh, some people just don't really wanna budget or don't have the money or don't want to get on a detailing schedule. And this is what makes this boat wash perfect for them. So we do have a few clients like that, and this is one of them. And this gives us our budget to kind of use venom, use mold and mildew remover when necessary, use some degreaser. And we pretty much do this on a bi-weekly to monthly basis. We come out and for whatever reason, there's always rust that starts to seep out of the stainless. But the reason we want to do the venom first is because this is going to be an acid. So it is not neutralized. It is acidic. And we're going to want to be able to come back out after we spray this off we want to kind of run a soap over it to kind of neutralize the area so that there's no damage being done after we're finished with the wash so i always do venom first so it's going to be rinse down first venom second mold and mildew remover next after that and once you get all of the heavy harsh chemicals out of the way then finally you want to come back with a ph neutral soap such as start and that'll neutralize all the surfaces and give your boat a really good cleaning without damaging or stripping any of the surfaces. Just a quick reminder, when you're finished with the venom, make sure you come back and you spray all that down. You don't want the acid eating on the stainless for an extended period of time, maybe five to 10 minutes max, and then make sure you rinse it all down before you start washing the boat. As you can see, I'm doing a second application in some areas. So if you're not happy with the removal or if an area just needs a little bit more work, no worries, do a second application of venom, let it sit for a couple minutes, rinse it down, and then move on. It's not very often that we will do this, especially with the boat set up. It's got a canopy over top of the boat, kind of reducing the amount of sunlight that's able to get to the boat, which will minimize the mold and mildew. So only about every three months, we will do a mold and mildew application, and we're gonna do it very lightly. We're using Stark Mildew Clean, which is one of the few products on the market that actually works for removing mold and mildew. So all we're gonna do is get a towel, we're gonna damp it down with the solution, and we're gonna rub it into the surface, let it sit for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna rinse it off with water. Because this is a light application, we don't really have to do any extra scrubbing. We don't have to get out a brush and rub it in and get it into the pores of the vinyl surface. But like I said, all we're doing is just getting a nice light coverage over the vinyl. Let that sit for a couple minutes, let it pull out any mold and mildew that might be starting to happen, and then we'll rinse it down and continue on with the washing process. After all your rust removal is done, all of your mold and mildew removal is done, and you rinse down the boat, now it is time to wash the boat. Get some Stark Pure Clean, put it in a bucket, fill it up, get it nice and soapy, nice and sudsy, and that is what Pure Clean is great at. Fill that bucket up, and you are going to be ready to wash. So I do have a Flexzilla hose, which I will link in the description below. I think it's an awesome hose to use. I've been using it since I started the business, so about four to five years now. Still the same hose that I've been using all this time. Just such a flexible, durable, and amazing hose. Now, let's get started. Before we really dive full into the wash process, I just want to mention never leave your wash bucket on a vinyl seat for an extended period of time. Otherwise, it will dent, it will imprint that pattern into the vinyl. It can actually damage it or it can even crack or you know fray the seat. So just something to be really conscious of. I'm really conscious of not setting my wash bucket on vinyl anymore. I try to set it on the non-skid somewhere on the decking, but somewhere where it's not going to damage the boat. 
Some of you might be wondering, what am I using to wash the boat? I actually have a rag company, or what they call the rag company, wash mitt. This is an excellent microfiber, super soft wash mitt. It does an excellent job at absorbing soap, water, and makes it super easy to clean your boat. This is literally my favorite wash mitt, and I've been using it for like six months now. It is the best one on the market. I love these things, and shout out to the Ray Company. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, but I do love their products, and this is definitely one of them. So I always like to start from the front to the back of the boat when I'm washing. This just makes the most sense, right? Either start top to bottom, front to back. We're not doing the top. Uh, we don't wash the little canopy thing on the top. So we're starting on the bow, and I'm literally washing everything backwards. So I like to work in sections. We'll wash the bow first. So we're going to wash all the compartments. We're going to wash the non-skid just briefly because we will come back later and wash that more thoroughly. But I really like to just soap everything up. I, for whatever reason, love to have a lot of soap, a lot of suds. Um, I really want to clean everything super thoroughly on all these boat washes. I'm always really conscious on making sure that I'm cleaning all the stainless surfaces really well so any fittings any cup holders like my mindset when I'm washing these boats is salt 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 so I'm just thinking where is salt at what is salt going to do where is it going to rust at and I'm making sure that I'm soaping up those areas really good we want to make sure we clean out all the compartments very completely we want to get all the tracks all the hatch tracks is what I call them all the compartments clean them out top to bottom and just really give everything a good rinse. Like I said, if you're conscious of getting everything clean, you know, really wondering or knowing where the salt's at, which is in the stainless, getting all that clean because we don't want extra rust to have to remove later on. And yeah, so again, use a really good soap, pH balanced, fill up that bucket, get it nice and soapy. And that is how, or that's really what makes me feel best about doing this and feeling like I'm doing my best kind of work. When you're finished washing the bow, go ahead and come back, rinse it all down. Like I said, I like to work the boat in sections, so I'm not going to wash the entire boat. I don't want the soap to dry on the boat. So we're going to wash this in about three or four different sections. The bow is first. We did all the compartments. We cleaned all the, you know, what you would call the outer caps or the gunnel caps, the non-skid, all the hatches, all the tracks, all the stainless up there. Now we're going to give it a really good rinse down, and we're going to move on to the next part. Continuing on, I usually like to wash the rest of the gunnel caps and the side walls all the way to the transom. And I pretty much, yeah, I just like to keep dipping my bucket in the soap and just making sure my hand mitt stays super soapy. Like I said, it just seems like it cleans better that way and you get more lubrication onto the surfaces. And yeah, we're just going to be super thorough about how we're washing. You guys might be wondering, like, is it better to use a foam cannon? I used a foam cannon temporarily. I didn't notice that it saved me any time. And I didn't really notice that it was really any more effective, especially since most of the time you're going to be washing these boats in the sun. It's all going to be, it's all going to come down to kind of time and it's not a car, right? It's a lot bigger than a car. So, you know, that's kind of up to you if you want to use a foam gun or not. I just noticed that I don't think it really saved me any time or really helped with anything. I just like to keep my bucket really soapy and sometimes I'll even put a little bit of soap onto my hand mitt and... Yeah, I'll be able to wash for a super long time very efficiently. So once you do that, you can wash the console as well. Console, sidewalls, gunnel caps, and really get all that stuff taken care of. I do like to wash all the poles, so all the stainless or aluminum poles on the console leading up to the T-top is really a good idea to wash this boat gets fished pretty heavily so i know there's salt all over the boat i know it gets quite dirty even sometimes get some sap on it so 
yeah we like to clean those really good and I think it's just important to clean all the surfaces we're gonna clean that center box that you see in the middle and that's gonna be kind of part of how we clean the console or the center part of the boat <laughs> Regardless of what you're doing, I just hope you guys notice the amount of attention to detail I really put into all of the boat washing work or detailing. It doesn't really matter what it is, but it's just so important that you just take your time to do things right. A lot of people don't do that nowadays, especially in the boating world. If you can just stand out, if you can separate yourself, all you got to do is do the best work, pay attention to detail, and clean everything like it's your own boat. And that will go so far and really it just helps so much in the maintenance of these boats when you can clean everything, keep everything clean, and you can actually feel good about the work you're doing. And that's how I approach every single job that we do, every single project. It's fun to me. I like to clean them. I like to get them perfect. And that's no different in this video. I actually forgot a spot so I remembered I came back rewashed the face of this box that I forgot to do I'm gonna rinse it off move on things happen and as long as you're paying attention you're constantly thinking of what you need to do next you'll always remember if you forget something and it won't be that big of a deal about halfway through the boat sometimes even three times depending really on the size of the boat I will completely clean out the bucket get new soap clean out my microfiber hand mitt and just make sure everything's clean again so we can keep washing uh, make sure no dirt particles are getting built up we don't want to wash dirty water back into the boat just doesn't make a whole lot of sense so constantly change out your water change out your soap clean your hand mitt and that'll be a good approach for kind of making sure that your quality and your control is there at all times <music> For those of you still with me, I appreciate your time up to this point and I appreciate your enthusiasm, your passion, and your willingness to want to do better when it comes to washing your boat or maybe your client's boat. I think a lot of this is going to be very visual, so there's only so much I can explain, but really a lot of it comes down to just doing, being aware, and constantly thinking of what needs to be done next. Uh, make sure you're opening all compartments, anything that opens up, and cleaning everything thoroughly obviously depending on what kind of value or service that your client is expecting or that you're offering to them um but yeah it's actually proven uh i saw something a little while back but a lot of people are visual learners it's very hard for me to sit here and explain something without you guys actually seeing me doing it so i think that's why these youtube videos are really helpful because you're getting a little bit of me explaining while i'm actually doing the work so like I said, stick around to the end because the visual is going to be literally priceless. You, there's no amount of detail or explain that I can do that can really compromise for me actually showing you how to do it. So like I said, I appreciate you guys for sticking around and I know your commitment and your passion and your enthusiasm for getting your boats clean and I want to kind of continue providing that value to you throughout the rest of this video we're gonna get the back end of this boat cleaned up and then you guys are gonna get to see what non-skid is all about because it does get a little different when it comes to non-skid on a boat like this it gets dirty it gets fished heavily sometimes there's sap that gets on the boat and we need to clean all of that up to get this boat looking right for the client swim ladders are so important to get clean guys so if you're skipping your swim ladder you need to reconsider Pull out the swim ladder, completely soap it down every single time. These things get filled with salt, with rust, with dirt, especially when you're using them frequently. Always clean these compartments out where the swim ladder is. So I just can't stress that enough. Swim ladders are so important to keep clean and make sure you soap this up really good. Please understand the amount of salt getting on the transom of your boat, including the outboard, as you're cruising through the water. I mean, literally your outboard gets destroyed with salt from cowling all the way down to the lower unit into the props. So clean all that stuff. Get all the salt off 
and clean all the brackets, clean all the hoses. That stuff is so important, and a lot of people like to either skip out on their outboard or like half wash it. That is the worst thing you can do. That is literally the part of the boat that gets the most amount of salt. So always take your time and cleaning your outboard, your hoses, and all that stuff around back there. Once all of the top side, which means above the rub rail, including the outboard, including all the compartments, all the gel coat, once everything is completely washed, then finally and lastly, you're going to do the non-skid. And what I'm doing right now is I'm coming through and I'm spraying simple green degreaser onto all the non-skid. This is going to make the non-skid very slick. It's going to make it very lubricated and it's going to clean really easy when you have degreaser on the non-skid. So be careful when you're walking. Also, this stuff is biodegradable. It is environmentally safe, which is another reason I love this product. But it also works extremely well. And once you get that done, now you're going to come back and first you're going to wash it down with a scrub brush. This will get any dirt or any particles sticking inside of the non-skid, it'll pull that up and get it out of there. And then you're going to come behind that with the magic eraser to give it that final clean. And this will pull up any skid marks or anything sticking on top of the non-skid, whereas the brush will get anything inside of it. So you've got two different purposes here, but the brush and the magic eraser together work perfectly now obviously if you do have a ceramic coating on your boat you would not want to use this process instead you just clean it with a hand mitt but because this boat is not protected it does get dirty it does get fished heavily and it is on our detailed boat wash we're going to clean it like this you know probably once a month to make sure that the non-skid stays super clean for the client For those of you wondering if this will damage your non-skid, no it will not and this really is the best solution for someone who's not interested in getting a ceramic coating or a serious protection system on their non-skid. This is going to be the best second option to clean it and to make sure it stays free of dirt, grime and all that stuff and stays as clean as possible. So this process is safe and you will be good to do this on the non-skid. Now when it comes to the dilution, I personally dilute 50-50, so 50% degreaser, 50% water. Uh, I think this works best. I do like a strong degreaser. I don't like to water it down too much, but this is how I do it on the boats, and then I come by with the magic eraser or the scrub brush. Some boats I'll just maybe do one or the other. It just really depends on the surface. Like I said, magic eraser will take out any skid marks, any black streaks that you have on your non-skid that will be gone with the magic eraser the brush though that helps get inside of the non-skid the little cracks right this is diamond plated type non-skid it's got those points and those valleys and the high spots so you want something that can get inside to get out any dirt any sap and you know a lighter scrub brush is always recommended but the magic eraser excellent not going to do any damage like maybe someone would think uh, it actually works super effectively and is one of the best ways to clean your non-skid. Once you are completely done with the top side, so nothing should be left, everything should be completely rinsed off. You don't want to have to go back up there. Then it's time to do the hull and the bottom of the boat. Now, if you want, you can dry the top side. Believe it or not, this boat is pretty oxidized on the top side. So most of that water is just simply going to be absorbed into the gel coat, unfortunately. So there's not going to be a whole lot to dry up there. And we do have a canopy, so I'm not really concerned about getting it dried right away. But if you're doing a detail or something or you didn't want any watermarks, then yes, once you're done with the top side, 
you should go up there and dry that first before you get started down the hall. But if you guys just missed that little section, I put Stark Venom in a bucket just a little bit. I got our brushing system out. We've actually got a Surehold brush today with the blue brush and their telescoping pull. But we're going to dip that brush into the bucket, get some venom on the brush, and we're just going to brush the entire bottom of this boat with venom. That's going to pull off any water line or any water stains, right? Because we do wash this boat every two to four weeks. And he does fish the boat heavily. So every time he comes back, he does get a little bit of water line build up. But it's just super light, so this product is going to work great. You don't want to have to use something like muriatic acid every single two weeks, every single month on your boat. That's going to be very damaging to your gel coat over time. And for someone who doesn't want their hull to be buffed out, to be polished, to be protected, this is going to be the safest way to handle the water line on a boat that is frequently washed as a boat like this. After about three to five minutes, and remember, venom is a slow release acid, so give it some time to work, put it on the surface. It's going to do all its work itself. You don't have to do anything. It's going to pull out the water line, gonna pull out what other people call the scum line, and it's going to dissolve it. After that has happened, after, like I said, right around three to five minutes, rinse venom off of the bottom of the boat, and then you're gonna wanna file that up with a boat wash to neutralize the surface which we're going to be doing shortly in this video. When you're completely done, rinse out your brush so that's good to go for the wash and then rinse down the bottom, get all the venom off the surface and then we're gonna proceed to washing the hull. I will typically wash the lower outboard unit from the dock just because I'm not able to reach that when I'm up on the boat. And then I'll proceed to wash the hull. Uh, I do like to use the deck brush for this situation because this is a boat on a lift and we can't necessarily wash the entire boat with the hand mitts. So this is what makes either the Surehold brush or even the new Yacht Stick blue brush, which is going to be super soft fibers or bristles which won't scratch any surfaces from gel coat to isinglass to glass to stainless this kind of brush will not damage any of your surfaces so when you're washing your boat make sure that you use this brush and this brush only because it's the only one that's safe to use on all of your boat I will be honest though, I am so upset because I lost one of my yacht stick pulls and this was the XL. So keep in mind, that's like a $325 pull and I lost it. I don't know where it went and now I can't use it until I get another one. So that's a big bummer. You guys know, or maybe you don't, but we are partnered up with yacht stick. I actually reached out to them and was inquiring about working together Obviously, we have the YouTube channel, and it's just a product that I really support and stand by. I love their technology, the carbon fiber, the fact that all that stuff floats in the water. And yeah, typically, I would be using Yacht Stick over Surehole. It's just the fact that I lost my pull. So until I get another one, that's what I have. But like I said, I do recommend Yacht Stick, and be sure to check out all of their products as we do have our code TOPDOC. 10 all caps for any yacht stick products that will save you on free shipping because normally they charge you for shipping when you buy from their store so use that code save on shipping and try out some of their products as they are amazing and in fact we are using one of their chamois right now to dry the boat when it comes to drying the boat, I will typically always opt for a chamois unless we're dealing with a ceramic coated boat. Then I will use the DNA Ultra Plush drying towel and that just makes it easier to dry because the ceramic coating becomes very aggressive when you try to slide a chamois across the coating. So that works better for ceramics. But for general boat cleaning, I do love the chamois. Number one, you wring them out and then they're good to go and they're basically unlimited use. 
whereas the drying tiles once those get filled up they're kind of done for you can wring them out to a certain extent but they just become a pain to deal with where the chamois they will completely dry out and become reusable once again we are using the yacht stick chamois so you can buy the chamois from their website these are just hand chamois we also have their uh, floor chamois or what you would call like a yacht mop is what they call it and that's great for cleaning non-skid cleaning any surfaces that you can't reach by hand and then the hand chamois of course is great for the top side and areas that are reachable uh, within reaching distance so that's what we like to do and I always dry colors first if you guys want to know on the proper steps to what you should dry first second third go ahead and check out we do have a course out right now it's called detail like a pro it's actually released on YouTube so I will throw that up on the video right now if you guys want to check that out but basically the proper order to dry your boat is colors first outboards windows and then pretty much everything else is second priority but if you want to learn more on that process check out that video up there in the link above so we're going to continue drying this boat we'll finish the hull, get everything down here finished up we'll get on the top side dry all of that and then that will basically bring this boat to a wrap I actually flipped the process in this video, which if you call it that, that's great, but I washed the glass before the outboards. That again is kind of controversial, but typically I would prefer to wash the outboards first because you can always clean the glass with the glass cleaner if perhaps you do have water spots. So yeah, especially if there's a lot of sun out, I would clean the colored gel coat first, the outboards, and then the glass. Like I said, I reversed that in this video if you caught that. And then everything else, like I said, second priority, but I would typically try to get the stainless, the aluminum dried, and then get the seats done, all the white gel coat, and yeah, just really dry everything thoroughly. I'm very big on making sure everything gets dried, not to the point where there's not a single drop on the boat, but I want everything very dry, almost like I'm about to detail the boat, because look, if you leave a lot of water on the boat, that's going to increase the chances for mold and mildew to build up you don't want to have a lot of mold on your boat so make sure those compartments become super dry make sure all the seats are super dry and really just act like you're about to detail the boat I think that's the best advice that I could give you is dry the boat a lot of companies or and I don't want to say a lot but you know typically people will view that part of the boat wash is not so important but I am extremely serious about that and as are some of the clients and I think that's a super reasonable approach and yeah make sure that boat gets completely dried everything from the non-skid to the seas to the compartments make sure it is dry before you're finished Finally, to wrap up the wash, we always do a protection to the vinyl, such as 303 Protectant or DNA Regenix. Today we're using DNA Regenix. It's just a really great, simple way to add some extra oils into the seats so that over time they don't crack, they don't fade out, and they don't become really frail. So this is just something that we offer since this surface is very important to keep the oils into the surface, especially when you're washing the boat frequently. So this is just super simple, it doesn't take much time, maybe takes a couple minutes to do. We spray the product on, rub it in, and then your vinyl now has oils on it, so it's gonna stay protected. And that's really where I want to leave this video at today. So guys, if you did enjoy the video, please give me a like. If you got a lot of value out of it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of more videos coming, a lot of great ideas on the schedule, and we're just really happy to give you guys the best information and practical information to use as you're taking care of your boats, whether you're a boat detailer, boat owner. And if you haven't turned on bell notifications, be sure to turn on those bell notifications right now so that you get notified every single time we release a video. We always release on Sundays or Wednesdays. Um, right now the schedule isn't exact because unfortunately I don't have full time to dedicate to this channel necessarily. I get caught up in work and in projects and I kind of make the videos. I definitely take a lot of time out of my day to make them, but sometimes I just simply can't get to them 
And yeah, I appreciate all you guys' support. Um, be sure to support our links in the description below. We are sponsored with Stark, with Ceramic DNA, and with Yachtstick. We always appreciate all those support links, and we really appreciate when you guys check out 1% Detail. When you buy from our um, 1% Detail site, we've sourced some of the best products on Amazon to make it easy for you guys to find because only the best products will make it to our site. And it just makes sourcing for you guys super simple. With that said, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.